that staff will be coming forward under new timelines with uh, recommendations and options for subcommittee to consider with regard to the gaming proposal. So if I may uh, begin the meeting uh, by, Councilman Rulo, you want to speak? I was just going to, through you, Mr. Mayor, ask staff to give us an update with respect to where we were, uh, where we are presently and where we're headed, so that we just can, uh, with the new deadline and new information, uh, could you just give us a brief uh, synopsis of where we stand? Yeah, that's... <clears throat> Certainly, through, go ahead, through you, Mr. Mayor, to, to the Councillor. Um, the proposed schedule, uh, we're still working on the March 1st deadline. Um, we put a proposed schedule within your package today, which we are going to revise, um, because uh, further to direction given on November the 14th that the Council meeting, uh, staff was directed to come back with a report on conditions to, to the subcommittee. So we will need some time to put that report together. So. What we're going to do, if you take a look at your schedule currently, um, we, ha we had a meeting scheduled for December 13th uh, for another meeting of the subcommittee to talk about the polling questions. That meeting will have to be pushed into January because we won't be able to bring a report back until early January on the conditions uh, that we need to set forward for the uh, to move forward. So that's where we are right now. We don't anticipate, uh, uh, we uh, this original schedule gave us two weeks of wiggle room. Uh, we do anticipate that we can still bring that forward within that time frame. Uh, but uh, the conditions part, as was articulated at the council meeting and uh, through other councils, especially from the city building perspective, we need to get a, a, a great a matter of detail uh, on that. Uh, so uh, we, we figured this would be a, a good opportunity to adjust that schedule and bring those conditions forward in a formal report. So through you, Mr. Mayor, with respect to um, the date of that report, so when do we anticipate that report coming forward? Through you, Mr. Mayor, to the Councillor. We are going to work on that. That's probably in the f first two weeks of January. We haven't pinned down that date as okay. of yet. But All right, so at the beginning of the year then? Uh, absolutely, yes. Uh, fair enough. Oh, but oh sorry. So yeah. Go ahead. But we can't bring that report forward until we uh, talk about the, uh, the actual conditions are, and that's what our discussion will be today under 4.2. So we're going to need some direction from the committee as to what you want those conditions okay, so to that's, be. Okay, that's very vital. Okay. Yes. All right. So, so we're not, uh, I guess, and that's, that's what we've been waiting on just a little bit in terms of our, since our last meeting is that we as staff can't come forward with those conditions. We need to receive that direction from the subcommittee. Okay, Mr. Mayor, so at the appropriate time, I'd like to speak on the 4.2 item, and I have no problem moving 4.1 as uh, updated by staff. Yeah. Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and good morning, everyone. Actually, it's on just the previous uh, yeah. uh, comment by uh, the councillor. Uh, through you to, to Norm. Um, or Mike. So just hearing what we heard about the dates being pushed back and the reports coming forward in uh, in early January, what does this do in terms of the public meetings that had now been moved to? I thought it was the second week of January. Through you? Through the chair to the councillor, we're looking at uh, January 18th to the, uh, sorry, January 14th through the 18th for those public information forums. Uh, this timeline really doesn't affect those forums in terms of being able to go forward those information forums or an opportunity for information to be presented to talk to different stakeholders and to get some input. So we don't believe that uh, the two will be affected. We'd still like the public information forums to go forward in between the 14th and the 18th, barring everybody's schedule and the coordination of those schedules. Thank you. Um, could you could you also provide an overview for those who are uh, tuned in watching today and those who are present in terms of where we are with organizing those community meetings? We may not have a specific date, or do we have a specific date? And and you know what do you anticipate the format to be? Through the chair to the council. At this point, we don't have a specific date, other than we've told um, all the different stakeholders that we'd like to have, all the different panelists that we'd like to have attend the public information forums. Uh, that we're looking at the week of January 14th to the 18th. Again, we were working with the schedule that was ori originally set out with clerks and with the staff working group in terms of those meetings. Uh, in terms of the folks uh, and, and the experts that we're looking at having there, I think the initial discussions previously and, and through the previous timeline, we were looking at having representatives from uh, the Canadian Gaming Association uh, to talk to uh, the casino issue from a economic development benefits standpoint. We were looking at having somebody from uh, the public health industry speak to uh, matters of public health. Uh, we were looking at having staff present an overview of the process and then we were uh, going to be in touch with the Hamilton Police Services as was directed as well in terms of ensuring that uh, police services was there to offer their input and their insight in terms of the current Flamborough location uh, as well as any proposed locations. 
What, what I didn't hear, and perhaps I missed it, could you just, um, is everyone on the panel, are they confirmed at this point, or have we just had initial discussions? Uh, they are confirmed. I mean, we, sorry, through the chair, they are confirmed, Councillor. We've, uh, right now they're waiting to hear from us in terms of when we can coordinate the scheduling. We're also working with Cable 14, Kojigo 23, and ensuring uh, that we can have everybody attend. So within that week, we're probably looking at the Tuesday and Thursday at this point. Um, we're hoping, it, you know, once we get direction today on, on some of the other issues and have some subsequent conversations, because we weren't sure initially where the schedule would go and if, count, if subcommittee wanted to adjust that schedule. Uh, so we were hoping following today to confirm the dates and then start uh, from an advertising perspective, start promoting the fact that these are coming within the third week of January. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, just one last question. Uh, have we firmed up a location Locations, I should say, has have the bookings been done? If we're looking at the Tuesday and Thursday, uh, through the chair to the councillor, and ter City Hall is the one location that we were uh, looking at for the uh, public meeting, or sorry, for the information form that we were going to have here in Hamilton. In terms of Flamborough, again, we're looking at Water Down uh, High School, but we haven't uh, confirmed that yet. All right, thank you. Um, that's my one concern because we it's December 1st this coming weekend and that doesn't leave us a lot of time and that high school does tend to book up quickly. So um, I would suggest that if we can make that phone call, find out if it's available. And certainly Allison in my office can be of assistance as well. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor Partridge. Uh, I have Councillor Whitehead for first time and Councillor Merlo again. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it seems to me that there's duplication and a lack of efficiency in regards to the process. You already, I already indicate clearly that we've already had a number of panelists that covered all the array of issues. Uh, we were so far ahead in the context of hosting uh, the, the Mountain Forum, and yet there's been absolutely no consultation uh, with myself in, regard, in that regard. And I'm just concerned that we're, we're spinning some wheels here. One. Two. Uh, to suggest that you're going to have a, a meeting in Flamborough and a meeting in downtown uh, Hamilton and not one where the largest population base in the city of Hamilton is located is insulting. Councillor, please, I'm going to ask, I have the, I'm the chair, I'm, I'm going to ask members of subcommittee to speak respectfully and not infer, make any, uh, impugn, impugn any of the motions or activities of our staff. We, we had far too much of that recently. We're not insulting anyone. We may have made an error, but it shouldn't be considered as an insult because no one is intending to insult anyone. We want to get our work done, so please go ahead. Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Mayor, this is the response I'm getting from the community. I'm repeating what the community is saying. It's insulting that you're not having a meeting uh, where the largest population based in the city of Hamilton is located. So again, uh, we heard from a number of councillors in the, in, in the past with Councillor Jackson and Councillor Devell speaking to the, same, uh, uh, to the same point. So again, I want to know how we're going to incorporate uh, and facilitate the councillors that want to host a meeting uh, on the mountain with the formats that we've already uh, established and incorporate it within this plan. Want to answer that? If I may, uh, for the assistance of committee, I, what we're attempting to create here is the the foundation of what the successful meetings will be, and so the requirement is that the staff put together the information that we're seeking in terms of. Uh, uh, casino conditions, sites. We need to hear from uh, Dr. Richardson, who's bringing a report forward, and so on. So if a useful meeting is going to be held, as much information needs to be collected, and that, I believe, is staff's concern right now, is that they be given some direction from us so that they can bring back a report with recommendations and options, which then will be helpful to you in, in, in the forum that you wish to hold. But to, to hold it prematurely it creates the problem, Councillor, of what is it that the community group is considering in the absence of all of the information. So I only say that as a help from the Chair on, on your yeah, question. No, I appreciate that. But Mr. Mayor, the issue is not the content. Uh, I think there's concurrence that you need to have uh, uh, good information before you. And sometimes you don't have to reinvent the information because this stuff has been studied to death by many jurisdictions across North America. Mm -hmm. 
so I don't think you're going to see a lot of different information unless you're recreating it. Um, maybe unique to the circumstances in Hamilton, and, and that's that would be uh, certainly prudent. I guess my concern is, and I'm not asking for an earlier time frame. I'm, I'm just asking uh, that we give the due respect we're giving Flamborough and the, and, and the downtown location to the largest population base in the city of Hamilton, and that's the mountain. And it doesn't seem that that it, you know, it appears that it's falling on deaf ears, and, and it is concerning because the feedback I'm getting from the mountain is, why is it Flamborough? Why is it downtown? Why not the mountain? And I just want to emphasize that we cannot ignore the most significant Councillor, that's the fourth time you've said that now. Mike, do you have anything to offer in this discussion? Through the chair to the councillor, I mean, the only thing that uh, staff is working with is the November 1st um, direction from this subcommittee and subsequently GIC and council to establish two public education forums. Um, I mean, other than that, there's not much more to add. I mean, I, I understand, councillor, I mean, if there's anything we can do to assist in terms of the, the, the public information sessions that you're having, staff, I think, is absolutely willing to do that. But in terms of the direction that staff has in terms of pulling together the two forums, uh, we're going with the subcommittee's direction, that, which was to establish two information forums, City Hall and Flamborough. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, when that uh, uh, decision was made, it was made in the time frame that uh, there just wasn't adequate logistic time to uh, pull off a third meeting. Uh, now that we know that we got extended period of time, because we were looking like December something as a deadline, now we know we have a, a much longer uh, dead, deadline, we can certainly accommodate the, uh, the third meeting. So uh, I would only ask my colleagues to respect the 140, uh, $150,000. Please don't pounds. say that anymore. We respect every taxpayer, every resident of this city. And I'm not going to hear this constant drumbeat. I'm not going to hear this conference constant drumbeat. That's the fifth time. No one's ignoring anyone. And you show respect to our staff and our council. Context of the casino, so they have an opportunity to voice their opinion. Absolutely, and it's not in one location or the other. We're treating each section of the city equally. Absolutely, thank you, uh, Councillor Marula, uh, Councillor Pasuda. I'm sorry, first time, and then Councillor Marula. Thank you, Mayor Bertina. And uh, yes, we did give direction back in November to staff for two uh, public forums, uh, one here and one in Flamborough. And through you, Mr. Mayor, to staff up there, whether it be Norm or Mike, that can help here. Both forums are going to be held at City Hall and at Flamborough. The format, the way it's set up, this, the um, speakers, the panel are both the same, exactly the same people. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Through the Mayor to the Councillor. That's correct, Councillor. So, Mr. Mayor, if, if we were to, as a committee, to look to a third meeting for the mountain people, how, how would that affect the plans in moving forward? Through the chair to the councillor, uh, I mean, we would have to determine you know, an appropriate date and then work to work with the schedules of the individuals who we're inviting to be panelists to have a third date. So, I mean, if that's a direction from the subcommittee, then staff will work on pulling together a third public information forum for the mountain residents. So, through Mr. Mayor, so Mike, were you going to have both public information forums in that one week, within that one week? through the chair to the council. That was our hope, to have them both within the same week, just in terms of scheduling, in terms of coordination. And again, despite having uh, an extension in the timelines in order to, to work with the existing timelines on conditions, on, on the polling, we were looking at that same week. But uh, again, those, those times are, are slightly flexible. We were working with a two-week cushion at the end of that month to ensure we met all the appropriate deadlines. It's just, uh, I, and I, I need to understand, uh, Councillor Whitehead's um, concerns or his residents' concerns, I, and I mean I don't want to lead on here, but I think maybe we should have had one for the mountain too, and that would have included all of the city, from one end to the other. It's just uh, something I'm thinking of. I don't know. Let my colleagues add to that. Anything else? Thank you, Councillor Marula. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And just to clarify, the process was actually discussed and, and confirmed and you would require a reconsideration motion at present uh, to add another meeting but the intent was that City Hall is the center of governance for the entire city of Hamilton. We 
incorporating Flamborough as an option out of respect for the existing operation there. But if we go down this road, then ultimately then, based on the premise that's been set, Ancaster, Dundas, Waterdown, where does it end? The point remains that enough with the language of divisiveness. I hope we can end the language of divisiveness. The Hamilton Mountain is part of Hamilton. It always has been, always will be. And to divide it, I think, is, is, is unfortunate. And I'm, I'm, I think it, it, I think Councilor White has mis, misspoke on that framework. I think what his intent is to try to be as inclusive as possible to the individuals he represents. But knowing that I have a significant amount of family and friends in that area, there's no way they ever consider themselves separate from the core of, the Hamilton, of Hamilton or any part of Hamilton, for that matter. So in saying that, I think it's important that we calm our heads prevail and we focus in on what's before us. And what's before us is a motion the council passed, and we would need a reconsideration motion, which I believe would be a waste of time. Let's try to make the best of the situation that's before us and one that creates unity rather than divisiveness. And I think what we have before us is just that. So I, I, I would hope that this, this discussion of trying to divide the city doesn't continue and we can focus in on the issue. And that issue is to try to be as inclusive as possible in an open forum without, without creating that divisiveness. Having said that, through you, Mr. Mayor, if there's a problem with the process that we're having right now, staff is only following our direction. So I think if there's any angst about what we see before us, direct it to me, perhaps, or you, Mr. Mayor, but I know that this was my motion. So if anybody has a problem with what's before us, then the problem is with me and not staff, because staff's just simply doing their job. So on that note, let's just move forward. Let's try to, let's try to make a, the best of the scenario, which I believe is before us the best case scenario. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Whitehead. The circumstances in which that motion was put uh, forward was in a very tight timeline. Let's be clear. So can I ask the staff, uh, through the chair to staff, is that correct? Uh, the, the, one of the reasons uh, that there was some concern about logistics is because of the short time frames. <laughs> through the chair to the councillor, uh, when that motion was passed, we were working with a previous timeline. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ms. Mr. Mayor, the, uh, the issue of uh, whether it needs to be two-thirds or not, my understanding is it would be an amendment from two to three. It's not a two-thirds vote. So uh, I want to make that clear to the clerk, and I ask that question. If you add an extra meeting, would that be an actual amendment? Yes, through the chair, it could be an amendment, or it could be a, a new recommendation from this subcommittee that would then be reported to General Issues Committee and Council for approval to have a third work, workshop or work, third... Uh, Session. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, the, the difference here is uh, you're forcing the councillors on the mountain to, uh, uh, to not be part of the formal city process by, uh, uh, by not including the mountain as a third location. Uh, and we're not talking Ward 7. We're not talking Ward 8 or Ward 6. We're talking a pretty large geographic area being covered off uh, on the mountain meeting. Uh, it would actually make it even more access, uh, accessible to the people in Mount Hope and Bimbrook and An even Ancaster. So uh, when you talk about geographic regions, lower city, upper city, and certainly Flamborough uh, 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 needs uh, the attention because of its uh, isolation location. So I think those are three natural geographic areas that really uh, meets the, 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 the principles and, the, and, and the, the mission statement of engaging uh, doing everything we can to engage the broader community. And so all I'm asking is uh, understanding that there's three significant geographic areas uh, in the city. Let's make sure we cover all three off in such an important issue. Partridge, you take the chair. I myself as a first time speaker. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Originally, the, the, the notion was uh, that we have a public meeting of the city and the city public meetings are held. Councillor, I'm speaking and I hope you're going to listen because this has to do with what your comments uh, entail. The city is the city and the meeting as all meetings related to city business would be held at the city hall. The, the other issue incorporated 
the areas in which the Flamborough facility was located and also the, the notion of the, I dare use the word amalgamated areas. If we are going to continue down the path of seg segmenting the city, there will be East End, West End, East Mountain, Stony Creek Mountain, Stony Creek, Binbrook. The, uh, it, there's no end to that notion. There's no disrespect to anyone in terms of, of large areas of population. City business is conducted in City Hall. But the, as I said, and I'll only say it once again, the consideration has to be given to the Flamborough area and as an extension of that, the new areas of the city. Now we saw division in the past. I, I, I really hope that we don't follow along a path of continually subdividing the city into special interest areas. Having said that, we are fine to entertain any motion, any amendment, anything that would satisfy any member of this subcommittee or any member of council. The matter will go before council. It can be discussed with council uh, through you, Madam Chair. But in fact, the problem was created when we went too quickly on public forums before we were able to gather the information which staff is now being, being directed to gather on our behalf. And upon having that, including Dr. Richardson's report, including perhaps a report from Chief DeCare, then we can sit in these forums and openly and honestly and fully discuss the issues confronting council with regard to gaming. So those are my comments. Please let's keep a respectful uh, debate. I'll take the chair back, Councillor Partridge. Thank you very much. Thank and you, Mr. Mayor. Just one moment, yep. please. Um, I had asked the cameraman to move over a bit. I just wanted to acknowledge that he did, and thank you very much. I appreciate that. You have Councillor Pasuda as the next speaker on your list, and then Councillor Whitehead would also like to be added. Thank you. Councillor Pasuda. Thank you, Mayor Bertine. Well, first of all, a little bit of housekeeping here. I thought I was appointed vice chair of this committee. Something's changed. Oh, I apologize. Uh, there's no intent to insult anyone. We're I, moving just, along in a rather animated uh, way, okay. Councillor Pasuda. So if you, I, I apologize profusely for not acknowledging you as the vice I'm chair. I'm not upset. It's just thought a little bit of housekeeping, sir. So okay with that. Uh, Mayor Bertina, I, I think I'm going to take a different direction on the way this is going. We have the two meetings. So we have the one in Flamborough and then we have the one here in council chambers. So should we get a very large crowd from West Hamilton, Central Hamilton, East Hamilton, and the Mountain? What about public accessibility? How do we fit all those people within City Hall to participate? And, and that could be a question for staff. So, and the next question is, the length of the meeting of this forum, and we have a lot of people here, will it go on and on until everybody gets their, their chance at the mic? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Through the chair to the councillor. Um, in terms of your question on will we continue to, I mean, right now they're scheduled for two hour meetings. Um, you know, our thought would be that the panelists speak for about a half an hour and then we entertain questions and comments from uh, those in attendance. Um, you know, would we continue in terms of the length of that meeting until everyone's had the opportunity to speak? That's usually how um, most of the public information sessions we have continue. Um, I mean, I can't, it, it's, a, it's an important issue. I mean, I can't necessarily uh, postulate or, or hypothesize how many people would attend the meeting. I think it'll be very well attended in terms of uh, ensuring that there's adequate seating and accessibility. We'd have to work with facilities and clerks to ensure that uh, those things are addressed. Okay, it's just something to consider. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Whitehead. <laughs> raises a very interesting point. Um, if you're going to do true engagement and have a true opportunity for people to engage in the discussion, to have one meeting downtown to take in over 300,000 or 400,000 plus people is absolutely asinine. That's not true engagement. We know that we need a second meeting. Councillor, I'm going to ask you to watch your language again. You use the word asinine 
and you have used the word insulting, and that has no relation to the quality of our staff or our council members who are wishing to see a proper outcome. So please watch your language. Mr. Manor, I'm using an adjective to describe a process, not an individual. So if you want to start uh, uh, editing adjectives and describing processes, uh, then you're not being democratic. The reality is, is that I'm asking for consideration for the logistics of really engaging the community by having one meeting at City Hall for the vast majority of population and try to understand the logistics of the engagement and the opportunities that would prevail in that kind of setting. We know that it's not a great opportunity. And in fact, we probably get more criticisms than we would get positives. So to avoid those criticisms, I'm only asking for consideration to have a third meeting uh, endorsed by this committee and council uh, on the mountain to capture the broader population so that not everyone has to rush down and crowd out the city hall. Thank you. Councillor Partridge. I'm sorry. I think your fourth time. I'm only I believe I had Councillor Partridge and then <laughs> Councillor Marilla. Thank you, Councillor Marilla. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and uh, through you to staff, can, can we just go back and talk about what was the objective of having the two public meetings to begin with? Through the chair to the councillor, I mean, our, our, our view on the objectives that were set out by the subcommittee in terms of having those public information forums were to have an opportunity to have some panelists with some expertise speak to the issue, inform the public, uh, they were meant to be informative in nature, not our typical uh, public information meetings where we have delegates come up necessarily, have five minutes and speak at a podium, but more so for um, the, the panelists to provide information, to, to try to educate the public, um, and then to hear questions uh, from the public to the panelists in terms of any areas of clarification that they required, um, any information that wasn't presented that they wanted questions on, and then uh, that information would be collated and uh, presented to uh, presented to subcommittee and then subsequently GIC and council uh, that would help formulate uh, what is council's direction on this issue. All right, thank you. And so just just to confirm, because my understanding was that as well, but the objective was that we would we would have the opportunity for two public meetings so that people could come and hear the panelists and then there would be opportunity for a Q&A, and there will be an MC, who, a Master of Ceremonies, who will conduct both meetings. And uh, the purpose of having Kojiko and Cable 14 there, and if you could just confirm this for me, would be that they would then televise those two meetings to the broader community, to those who were not in attendance, so that everyone would receive the same information. Is that correct? Through the chair to the councillor, that's correct. Thank you. Because I, I honestly think if we have a meeting on the mountain, and no disrespect to anyone in the city of Hamilton, if we have then a meeting in Stony Creek, we will need to open this up because that same argument about being fair to everyone would mean potentially up to five additional public meetings. When the whole purpose, when the whole purpose was to be able to televise, have the panelists there, televise it. All of Flamborough gets uh, Kojiko 23. They do not get Cable 14 other than Greensville and a few points west. So cable 23 out of Burlington would then broadcast that information from the Flamborough meeting to all the folks in Flamborough who would not be in attendance at that meeting. Is that correct? Through the chair to the councillor, that's correct. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have Councillor Marula and then Councillor Whitehead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And again, along those same lines, the entire intent of this and when Councillor Whitehead brought it forward was to have a virtual panel. Right. I had nothing to do with bricks and mortar and, and, and people being invited to attend in person. So whether you live in Flamborough, Ancaster, or the Mountain, you will be participating. And is to have a virtual panel involved. And Cable 14 would be involved, social media would be involved, email questions. So it had nothing to do with bricks and mortar and, 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 being, and inviting 
people or the residents to a centralized location. But having said that, if, if it's considered asinine to, to basically have a, a centralized governance of any kind on any given issue, such as the casino issue, then this is a precedent-setting day. Because in the future, when we're dealing with, for instance, let's say, as past examples, the stadium, why didn't we have public meetings up on the mountain regarding the stadium? Or why don't we have meetings in Lambro or Ancaster on any given issue for that matter? Where does it end? Why is the casino issue so important, more, more so than taxation as an example? This is the center of governance when we're dealing with increasing taxes or decreasing taxes. So uh, if, if Councilor Whitehead's intent is to divide the city by ward and rotate meetings accordingly to have participation, then I ask him to bring us forward, forward that motion and it will be laughed out of this council. But until then, until then, let's look at what we have before us and the intent of what's before us. It wasn't about creating a bricks and mortar environment to invite people. It was about full participation through a virtual panel that Councillor Whitehead proposed in that virtual manner. So I'm not quite sure why suddenly we've gone from the virtual premise to bricks and mortar. And, and, and I'm, I'm somewhat insulted. And if you want to consider the initiative of asinine, I take full responsibility for trying to conduct a centralized form of governance at our center of governance. So be it, if that's how you define it. Having said that, well, I can't believe we're actually wasting this much time on this because it was decided at council and Councilor Whitehead supported it. And at that time, if you recall, I was chairing the meeting and we were dealing with the new time frames. Although the original report, which came to council, was based on the old time frames of four weeks, we did discuss that evening as a direct result of Councillor Clark bringing up similar issues surrounding the, whether or not uh, there was any immediacy to it, this issue. And we did discuss the fact that what we had before us that evening, Mr. Mayor, was due to the, to the fact that we were dealing with tight time frames. So we've supported what's before us at council unanimously, and we even discussed to some degree this very issue at that council meeting. So although the original report was done based on the old time frames, it was discussed at council to highlight the fact that we're dealing with a new time frame. So I'm not sure what happened this morning and, and in attending this meeting, but everything was dealt with. We had dealt with this as a council. So from my perspective, I think there's much to do about nothing, and I think we need to focus on the issue, and the issue is to try to gain as much input from people as possible, because you can't prevent anybody from the city from participating, particularly from a virtual perspective. Like, I have no idea why we're spinning our wheels like this. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Whitehead. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, uh, in our due diligence, the reason why we're doing streaming is we uh, uh, did the research on the mountain. Uh, there's quite a few people that don't have cable 14, period. Uh, so the reason why we were doing the streaming and the uh, cable 14 component, so that we, in fact, we were going to use three forms of medium to uh, that's unprecedented to ensure that we got as many people engaged in this discussion. Now, when um, a councillor speaks that this is the centre of governance, I agree. This is the centre of decision making, but it's not the centre of citizen engagement. So let's distinguish the two. These meetings are not about decision making. These meetings are about engagement. And, and nowhere in any of our mission statements does it say that City Hall is the center of city engagement. The reason why we have community meetings and tax meetings throughout the community is to ensure that we give access to those who do not have access to center, City Hall. This is no different. This is a city engagement process, all I'm suggesting is that when you look at a population of over 500,000 people, to have only two meetings, one in Flamborough, and one in City Hall really makes it tough to give the larger population further away the access and the ability to participate in this process. And we truly believe that we want to uh, have as many people educated and informed and part of this process. Why would you resist? making it easier for them to attend. I'll take the, uh, and give the chair to the vice chair, Councillor Pasuda, and I, hopefully we can conclude this diversion. Every city in North America 
does it this way. There are very few occasions, members of subcommittee, that large numbers of people attend meetings, whatever the subject. The largest meeting in my memory in eight years of council, first is the inaugural meeting of the year when we moved to the convention center to provide seating for the anticipated larger crowd. The next largest attended meeting that I recall was the special meeting that I called for the Aerotropolis discussion, which was held at Merritt Hall in Ancaster, and about 400 people showed up, most of them expressing their disagreement with council's decision, and council went ahead in any way and made that decision in spite of the 400 people who came out, and clearly delegation after delegation after delegation spoke against it. It is absolutely impossible to conduct municipal business, and we have tried it. Members of council will recall that we rotated, and the clerk will certainly recall, council and committee meetings to different locations. And what it caused was a lot of trouble for especially clerks to move all of the materials that they had to move to the remote locations for the benefit of the 10 or 20 people who showed up. Councillor, I'm going to ask that this, decision, this discussion end now, and if you wish to bring forward to GIC or to Council a motion such as Councillor Marula has suggested, then we would be pleased to engage in that debate. But right now, I urge the subcommittee to go back to the business that we have. We've gone on the better 45 minutes and not accomplished anything yet. So that's my comment. I'll take the chair back. And Councillor Whitehead, please go ahead. Mayor, in, in the context of sending the message to the, uh, the broader community, I'm going to test the will of this committee. I'm going to move an amendment that we have a third meeting on the mountain and see how the committee goes, and I the committee will be watching. You have a seconder? Councillor? I'll second it, Mr. Mayor. And the motion to the subcommittee, which uh, of course will report to council, is do we wish to have a third meeting on the mountain? All in favor? Sorry? An additional meeting in addition to the two public education forums, uh, one to be located at City Hall and one in Flamborough, then this would be an amendment, if you will, You'd like to amend the direction that to include a third meeting on the mountain. All in favor? Any opposed? Uh, motion carries. Uh, now, uh, discussion respecting casino conditions. Uh, once again, I think we need uh, staff's help on this. What would you like from the subcommittee, uh, before I put it to members of subcommittee, uh, with regard to um, Assisting staff with the uh, conditions. We, we uh, uh, through Mr. Mayor uh, to the committee, uh, purpose of today's meeting, we're, we're hoping that uh, the committee can direct us uh, in terms of the conditions that you would like set. Uh, the purpose of the subcommittee when it was established was to set the conditions for the uh, uh, terms of a casino uh, within the city of Hamilton. And uh, we, we just really need to know what it is, what conditions you want us to, to report back to you on. Uh, one fundamental one is the location. Um, can we look beyond Flamborough? Uh, we have Flamborough, there's downtown, there are other locations in the city. Um, each one of those locations will have with it a different set of parameters as to the conditions that might be set within those uh, uh, geographic regions. So we really have to get a handle on what, uh, what are those conditions uh, so we can move forward and report back to you. Councillor Pasuda, would you take the chair, please? Uh, through you, there, the first thing that, that I would like to see is a delineation or a separation of three different locations. One, Flamborough. Two, anywhere within the city. Three, downtown. The, so I'd like to staff to report back on options or recommendations or 
suggestions as to how a casino proposal would be impacted with regard to zoning or any other issues uh, on on uh, three or more locations, in other words, encompassing the entire city. The other, the next condition I would like to see is that if a proponent wishes to build a casino in the downtown area, that the proposal be required to include a hotel, an entertainment function, in addition to the casino with gaming tables. I would also suggest that such a condition uh, require that a hotel associated with the casino be incorporated into the first phase of the project. In other words, that somewhere down the road a hotel may be built would, would not be acceptable to me as a condition if a casino were to be located um, within the downtown area. Those are the two things that I had in mind. Uh, Councillor Pasuto, I'll take the chair back and invite anyone else to offer suggestions to staff as to what they would like to incorporate in a report back to the subcommittee with regard to conditions. Councillor Pasuto. Mayor Bertini, we have Councillor Marula. Councillor Marula. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, on, on the issue of um, on the location, uh, just quickly, I think I'm going to request that we have a meeting in Ward 4 too. I know that Councilor Collins indicates that we should have a town hall in Ward 4 and 5 potentially, so at the appropriate time I, I will be moving that at Council when the approved uh, mountain location is, is done. We're looking at Wards 4 and 5 and potentially Stony Creek as well, so uh, we're going to have I think 7 or 8 meetings, so staff's going to be busy logistically putting together town hall meetings. Having said that, on the actual conditions, uh, surrounding, on the conditions surrounding the casino themselves, I think it's important that if we do go down the road of actually moving forward uh, on a casino, which I, I'm, as everyone knows around this table, I hope does not come to fruition, but in the event that we're faced with that, that in, intent, I think it's essential, Mr. Mayor, that uh, as you've mentioned, a couple of the issues, but the residential component um, of, of the development needs to truly be um, integrated and a significant part of it needs to be residential. The commercial aspect uh, needs to be residential, but the, the, backs can't, the back can't be turned to the street. It must be facing the street. So in essence, it can't be self-sustaining. We can't develop another Jackson Square, per se, uh, down, downtown. Um, the other component... Councillor, if I may, just to sure. encapsulate this for our staff. So you're suggesting that in the site plan, there's articulation with the street in terms of the construction of the building, exactly, as opposed to uh, an enclosing. Uh, right. So I'm we, sorry to interrupt, but no, I, no, I just wanted to so capture you, that, Mr. Mayor. So the intent is, rather than a self-sustaining building of bricks and mortar, I, that that it, it expands onto the street as opposed to building up type of uh, scenario. So through you, Mr. Mayor, does that make sense to you, Paul? Through you, Mr. Mayor, to the Councilor, I, I understand what you're talking about in terms of urban design objectives. You want the building to be not standalone, if I, for lack of a better term. You would want it to be porous so that it has many entrances and exits onto the street and that the casino not be the dominant front part of the building, that That's the correct. other uses are the dominant pedestrian-oriented and maybe it's located on the interior or another floor, that type of thing. That's absolutely Is that where correct. you're... You're going? Yes, because okay. you, Mr. Mayor, what I find with the existing casinos is that when you enter, it's almost like a mouse trap. You, you want your end to kind of like try, try to enclose you. Uh, preferably, what we would like to do is, is, in essence, if we're going to go down this road, make the casino the least visible component of the development. The least, have it buried in the back and have everything else uh, up front, if that's the case, and building up, particularly from a residential and commercial perspective. Also, um, with the heck fire scenario, I'd hate to see any development that's going to take away from entertainment from the heck vice scenario that's ultimately going to impact us financially. So the deal should be that they use the existing facilities, whether that be Cobbs Coliseum, Hamilton Place, the Convention Center. They cannot build, and it has to be part of that process, to you, Mr. Mayor, to, to Paul, uh, any additional entertainment facilities. Uh, also, uh, I think that the way the addition uh, that we, we 
we obviously get input from public health and, and police, but also with respect to, to the way that the sharing of the profits is established. Granted, we can't change the way the OLG establishes that profit sharing, but we can, in the RFP, I, I believe to you, Mr. Mayor, to Paul, we can build it into our RFP that over and above what OLG gives us, that we will seek out more of a percentage from whoever is a successful bidder. To you, Mr. Mayor, can we not do that? Through you, Mr. Mayor, to the Councillor. Council can put what, um, what conditions they feel are appropriate within that proposal. Wonderful. Uh, because I think uh, when you look at the way the profit sharing will be, the province, Mr. Mayor, is getting itself out of the operation entirely. So it's going to be, they're taking 50% of the, of the actual gross, the provinces. So they're, t they're taking away all of their expenses, and they're taking 50% of the gross, and then they're literally giving us peanuts as a, as a city that's hosting this thing, you know, potentially, with all the troubles that are associated with it. So I think, personally, anyone that's going to be bidding on this potential casino needs to know that that in itself will not be acceptable, that we're going to be seeking a percentage of, the, of those gross profits as well. So I'd like that built in as well. Thank you. So uh, to staff, before I take my next speaker, who will be Suda Whitehead Partridge. Okay. So uh, the comments that we made so far can be incorporated into a recommendation coming forward. Is everybody good so far with what we have? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the committee, this is exactly the input we were looking for. Good. Uh, Councillor Whitehead, uh, Pasuda Whitehead Partridge. Thank you, Mayor Bertina. And uh, interesting, you named three Flamborough anywhere within the city and downtown. What would the, the boundaries be, sir, within downtown? How far would we reach? I'm thinking West Harbor. We don't go that far. So, Mr. Well, if, if you want me to respond to that, please, please. I would consider it the downtown, that new map that we've just made. What would be the rough parameters? Is it Queen to Wellington, Hunter to? The, uh, as the, the parameters or the guide for that, we've previously indicated that it's permitted in the downtown D1, D2, and D3 zones. Generally, they're captured within the boundaries of Queen and Hess on the west, Cannon to the north, Hunter to the south, and Wellington well, like, Street to the east, but it's not all of the properties in the downtown, but that's generally where those three zones are located. And it also is included in the uh, the West Harbor for the Burton Tiffany. West Harbor, too, would be included. Burton Tiffany lands, yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Councillor Whitehead. Thank you. And I also uh, uh, agree absolutely with Councillor uh, Marula that... Uh, I like to see uh, an, in, an outward type model versus an inward uh, type model. So I would believe, I'd actually like put numbers on I think 20, no, no more than 25% of a facility should be the casino and a, and a larger uh, facility such as a hotel. Uh, I, I suggest that, uh, uh, and Councillor Marilla touched on it, was the, uh, the tie into the HEC-5 facilities versus their uh, own um, um, entertainment within the facility. Uh, I anticipate, I don't know if we can do this in a condition, but reciprocal co-production uh, uh, co um, uh, shows uh, with those HEC-5 facilities uh, and tied into the casino operation. It's a thought. I don't know if we can do it, but at least put it out there. Uh, I think the other thing is um, uh, Toronto is pushing, and again, uh, Norm, might, to the chair, might have to clarify, they're put, right now, there's no, um, and this is more of an OLG issue, I think, I believe, is that there's no revenue sharing on the table side of the casino. It's just the uh, slots. My understanding, Toronto is still uh, uh, negotiating in earnest. I don't want to lo lose sight of that, and I want to be part of that process uh, to suggest, uh, to, to, to continue arguing for a greater percentage, or a percentage of the, uh, the table, and I think uh, whether that's a condition or it's a separate item, probably a separate item, but it should still be something we don't lose sight of. Um, trying to think of, oh, restaurants. 
Um, I, the, the concern I'm hearing from uh, uh, some people downtown is, again, the inward model that it's just going to be sucking everything out from everywhere else. So on the restaurants, I'm wondering, is there any limitations we can put on how many restaurants it could have in any one facility? Through you, Mr. Mayor, to the Councilor, no, there's not a, a, in terms of the zoning, a restriction on the number that you can have. It would be dictated uh, by the floor area that's available, provision of parking, that type of stuff. So. Okay. Um, anyway, if there's something creative to ensure uh, that there's uh, a synergy between the operation of this facility and obviously the, uh, uh, the surrounding areas as it pertains to uh, restaurant type facilities and I don't know what that would look at but let's put that as sort of the the macro principle and then see how we could arrive at something that uh, might make it uh, more palatable for uh, those that uh, may have concern those would be my okay. uh, thank you very much Councillor Partridge thank you mr. mayor and um Notwithstanding, my position is, and always will be, that Flamborough should be our priority location. So I just need to make that statement before I go any farther. I do not support a casino in downtown Hamilton, but let's get the information back, have all the facts, and then we can review it. On the, um, it's my understanding that right now the OLG does provide a piddly amount of, of money to be used to uh, deal with the mental health issues that would come out of uh, the gambling facility. Is that correct? Through uh, Mr. Mayor to the committee member, yes, uh, I believe there is a certain I don't know what that number is, unfortunately, but... Uh, no, and that's fine. That's yeah. fine. It's a piddly amount, so it really doesn't matter. Um, what I would like to see is one of the conditions be a percentage of the gaming tables. And I'll leave it up to staff to come back on what that percentage should be or could be, because you'll need to consult with public health, you'll need to consult with the police, but that there be a percentage that's a reasonable amount uh, from the gaming tables specifically to be, to be dealt with that. Um, one, one question, if I may, sir. Do we know at this point what the um, estimate for taxes would be from this facility that they would pay for the city. We know that we get a million dollars, close to a million dollars from Flamborough Downs for their location. Do we have um, uh, plus the 4.5 million in revenues? So that's 5.5 million, not to mention the 3,000 jobs in the Flamborough and Hamilton area that are supported by Flamborough Downs. The new casino, if it was anywhere else in Hamilton, so we can kiss that goodbye, 5.5 million, because Flamber Downs would close, is my understanding, is that correct? With a casino anywhere else in the city, Flamber Downs would close. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to the, to the councillor. Um, when a, once an operator is chosen for the area, and if uh, Flamborough uh, or if Great Canadian Gaming can negotiate a lease with that operator, if they're not the operator, they will continue to operate until that new operator comes into into Hamilton. So, uh, yes, they w and sh should they Flamborough not be the location, once that new location is established, Flamborough Downs would, would close. You can only have one gaming facility within your municipality. Right, thank you. And thank you for confirming that, because that's exactly what I heard from our um, supposed new partner in the OLG when they came in to present, that that would be the end of, of Flamber Downs, although they didn't say those words specifically. So that would be one, the condition that I would like to see um, would be on that percentage of the, uh, the gaming tables uh, to, again, put some meat on the bones in terms of how we as a municipality will have to deal with the significant social issues that will come out of a casino that's located anywhere else within the city of Hamilton. Thank you, those are my comments. Thank you, Councillor Pesuto, you take the chair. I have myself as a second time speaker, Councillor Marula, then Councillor Whitehead. Um, a note on the Flamborough taxes, they, they recently, for the information of uh, committee, uh, appealed their taxes and the taxes were reduced uh, based probably on the the harness racing issue and uh, the likelihood is that um, if there's no solution found to the harness racing that virtually two-thirds of the site which I think is a hundred acres 
would be uh, cons would be assessed as vacant land. So, uh, a report on uh, tax implications should include that all of that. Um, on the question of restaurants, I eat out regularly. I think I know every restaurant owner in downtown Hamilton. And over the years, I have discussed with Franco at the Shakespeare and Werner at Lo Presti's, and they are all insist we have to have a casino downtown. And I say, well, I notice if I go to a casino, they've got big restaurants and people don't seem to be going out looking where to eat after. They don't care. They seem to want the activity. Uh, and that could be something that we could have reviewed is, uh, you know, is what is the uh, opinion of the restaurant industry with regard to uh, a casino? And I'm not sure how we would regulate um, number of seats or I don't know how we would do that, but that'll be, I'm sure, captured in the recommendation that staff brings forward. Those are the comments that I had, uh, Councillor Marula and then Councillor Whitehead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you, Paul, could we also, I think it's important that we look at public space as a component of this and a public transit hub. Um, so if you look at the nose and corridor study uh, that you're obviously very familiar with, through you, Mr. Mayor, we have um, all those nodes and corridors identified, and I'd like to have an extension in whatever this this uh, proposal is or where it is, because I think where it is will tie into that public space and the need for a public transit hub as well. So if we could put in the RFP process that it be located within a, a certain parameter so that it can tie into that public transit hub, I think would be um, helpful as well. And over and above that, public space is essential, I, I believe, as well. So. Uh, a park uh, uh, or public space of some kind. Not even similar to, to you, Mr. Chair, to the council. Yeah, in terms of the urban design guidelines that we would uh, look at, if right. it is a downtown location, then obviously the public realm is, is extremely important in terms of any improvements, pedestrian connectivities, uh, uh, connections, uh, st streetscape improvements, etc. So that would all form part of that. Wonderful. And if we and it can be emphasized then obviously within the process, and. Uh, all right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Councillor Marilla. Councillor Whitehead. Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Chair. The uh, when the councillor spoke to uh, the mental health issue and, and, and said significant social uh, cost, I, I just want to be careful in how we use language because we're yet to get the reports. And uh, we already know that uh, there's many reports out there. So I think it's laudable what she, she's asking for. I think it's important quite frankly, that we ensure that we got as many resources to put towards those issues in City of Hamlet. So I think that is uh, a real credit to the council that brought it forward. Uh, and I think uh, uh, it, it's important that uh, we ask whether it's, I didn't want to restrict it just to the tables. I think the, uh, the, it's, a, it's a larger discussion in the context of just uh, additional revenue specifically targeting mental health issues uh, within the City of Hamilton. So uh, I just didn't want it restricted just to the, the tables. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's just there should be additional revenue, uh, period. Uh, what that percentage is or whatever is, uh, needs to be negotiated. Uh, but to restrict it to just one element of a, a casino um, you know, might be challenging uh, in the context, again, the type of revenue that we would uh, hope for to address any of those issues in, in our community. Thank you, Councillor Whitehead. Uh, Councillor Partridge, should you take the chair now, please? Are you sure? I'm absolutely sure. Thank you, Councillor Pasuda. So I'm honored. You, through you, Madam Chair. Norm, we're talking about revenue from tables. And in my discussions and discussions when OL, OLG came in, that they said there was not very much revenue obtained from tables based on the amount of people they have to have on the floor, pit boss, people working the tables, managing it, the cameras on them. Do, do you know, if, is there some truth in saying that? Do they say it's kind of a service and it's not a, a revenue maker, the tables? Through you, Madam Chair. Through you, Madam Chair, to uh, the Councillor. 
I, I'm not sure if it's necessarily uh, that it doesn't make a lot of money. It is very labor intensive. There is a lot of money that goes into it. Uh, uh, their main issue is with uh, when it comes to the table gaming is that it's not predictable. Slots is a predictable revenue stream and the table gaming they say to us is not a predictable revenue stream. And uh, there probably is because there is a lot of labor intensity to it as well. But that's, that's basically uh, the information I have on, on the table side, Councillor. Okay, and one more question to you, Madam Chair. Absolutely, go ahead. Um, Mayor Bertini indicated three, three places, Flamborough, anywhere in downtown. Flamborough, Great Canadian Gaming and OLG were negotiating because for the, them to have it or put a bid in for Flamborough, they had to negotiate a lease without giving a lot of details. Has that happened yet or is it still ongoing, the lease between OLG and Great Canadian Gaming? Lambro. Thank you, Madam Chair, to the Councillor. Uh, uh, negotiations, the last time I heard, are still ongoing, and uh, they have until basically the end of March to come to some type of conclusion. I'll take the chair back and I'll pass it to Mayor Bertina. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Now, do we have anyone else on the speakers list? So um, I'm going to ask staff once again uh, whether uh, you have enough information from the subcommittee to move ahead and prepare a report uh, to come back sometime in January uh, outlining um, the gaming issue with regard to recommendations and options based on the conditions you've heard and any other conditions that uh, would, if I may say to the subcommittee, that uh, staff may uh, Come up with because we'll see them all anyway. So I put that to you, Norm. Are, are you able to, based on today's meeting, uh, prepare a, a report for January for us? Uh, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, to the committee. Yes, I believe we have the information to get get started. But I'll ask Paul from a planning perspective to see if there's anything else he would like to see incorporated. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just with respect to location, you identified anywhere in the city, the downtown or Flamborough, and I understood you to say that the first cut would be with respect to zoning so we're simply looking at this from the perspective of where a casino would be permitted as of right under the current zoning across the city from yeah I, I believe what the subcommittee would want to know um, where is where it's permitted where it's permitted uh, what uh, would be required in, in Federation Park uh, the mountain what, what requirements may be for other uh, sites in terms of the, uh, would there be a lengthy process if somebody decided they wanted to do uh, the West Harbor Confederation Park um, and so on? Through you, Mr. Mayor, I think we can look at it from the perspective of we'll look at the city as a whole and then we'll identify where current zoning would allow for it and then focus on those areas in terms of, of parameters right otherwise you're into a rezoning possible official plan amendments public process that entirety and it becomes hard for us to to really focus in on this in the short time period that we have so if we can use that as the first cut in terms of that's right that'll, because, that'll help scope it a lot for us well I think the point is that OLG needs to know uh, for proponents who are coming to them, where the city of Hamilton is in terms of availability of sites, uh, along with these other conditions and so on. So, Short of that, Mr. Mayor, I mean, we can identify where it's permitted, but if there are certain areas where it is permitted that you wouldn't want to see it, then we would need to know that, or if there are preferred areas within which it's located that you'd want, we would uh, benefit from knowing that as well. I think, if I may, if we're going to be excluding sites uh, or making other considerations, a lot of that would be based on the information that will come forward to us in January. Okay. So, members of uh, the subcommittee, uh, I believe we have direction now to staff. We're anticipating a January report, sub following which um, we'll be able to finalize other issues in terms of public forums and, and so on. Councillor Marula. Could I add one other issue? Could, uh, to you, Mr. Mayor, um, have staff investigate the possibility of having time restrictions on a casino? So, in essence, having an actual closing time and opening time as well, because they're open 24 hours. 
So um, if we could have them investigate that possibility, it would be greatly appreciated. Okay, hours of operation. Okay, and if there's nothing else, Councillor Pasuda. Mr. Mayor, I don't know if I'm on track with this or not, but remember a few of us uh, councillors were talking about it outside one day on the steps down there about charity casinos. Do you know how that revenue is shared with the, uh, the community that have charity casinos? Like Aurelia, I believe, is a, a charity casino, and uh, Brantford is too, classifies a charity casino. If, am I correct in saying that? Do we know how revenues are shared with them? Might, might be an sure. in-depth question for Norm through you, Mr. Mayor. I don't know. Well, they're all charity casinos. I, through you, Mr. I believe they're all charity. Those are the uh, casino. The, they're the actual casinos because Brantford and, and the Sioux actually have tables as part of their operations. Um, when you look at the other uh, operations uh, at the racetracks, they're primarily slots, or they are just slots. So um, uh, the revenue sharing, basically, from the Brantford perspective, when uh, Mayor Friel was here doing his presentation, basically they don't get any of the gaming table revenue. Uh, they just get the same proportion as we do in terms of the slot revenue. Uh, but uh, theirs is actually a little bit more proportional because they have fewer slots. So, so from a percentage standpoint, it looks that they get more. I, I believe, Councillor, that the the table games are part of the strategy of making them more entertaining and appealing and let, rather than let's go down and stand in front of a machine and throw money in it we can you know dress up and play baccarat <laughs> or what I, I think it's more of they're not anticipating a huge amount of money as opposed to it's the glitz and all that the glitz and so on right thank you mr mayor councillor marula uh, one last thing mr mayor i know that uh, in the past there used to be uh, through the ACGO, uh, that uh, they, couldn't, um, they couldn't serve alcohol at the gaming tables. Now, through you, Mr. Mayor, to staff, what, what is the present legislation, and do they allow that now? If you don't know, that's fine. I'll take it offline. But if they, if they do allow it, I think we should probably look at a bylaw restricting that type of thing as well, potentially. So through you, Mr. Mayor, to, uh, to staff, if we can incorporate that as well. Incorporate the... Uh, no alcohol be served at any of the gaming or slot machines. Gaming tables or slot machines. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, if there is no other general information or other business that we wish to share, uh, Carolyn. Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to clarify for the committee with respect to the future meetings. There is a meeting set um, on this calendar for the December 13th at 9.30, which uh, following the discussion this morning, it may be canceled. But at this point, uh, I would still like to have that date reserved in case there is a requirement for the staff um, needing more information from the subcommittee. And we will cancel it as soon as... as um, that's fair to keep that space reserved because this seems to be a moving target, though, the whole thing. So let's, that's good advice. And on that, may I have a motion to adjourn? Councillor Partridge, Councillor Marula, all in favor? That's carried. Thank you.